Yo, what is going on guys? Flashverse here and welcome back to another video on Batwoman Season 2. And finally guys, the Arrowverse has returned with Batwoman Season 2 which obviously came out last night and it feels really, really good to do these types of videos again. So since a recent Arrowverse episode has just dropped, this will be my review and breakdown for Batwoman Season 2, Episode 1, otherwise titled, Whatever Happened to Kate Kane. But before I go over anything, however, you guys don't forget to drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel so you are aware of more Arrowverse content coming your way. And since this is a breakdown and review for the episode itself, spoiler alert in case you guys haven't seen the episode because I will obviously be doing a breakdown for it. So if you haven't seen the episode, then spoiler alert, you have been warned. Okay, so this episode gets right into the action without wasting any time. We have Ryan Wilder sleeping in her van since it is the middle of the night after all, but we have a plane crash literally right outside of her van. And um, we get these transitions between Ryan where she's investigating the crash site, but also Luke and Mary in the Batcave trying to get in touch with Kate Kane. But there has been no sign of her yet. Now later on in the episode we do actually find out that this is the plane where Kate was at. She flew to National City to get Kara's help with the kryptonite but on her way back her journey didn't go too well. But when we are on Ryan's side she investigates the crash site and she's trying to save this man who's crash landed as well but after that we obviously see her discover the bat suit. Now we do then cut to some crows investigation in the crash site since they are trying to recover any dead or injured bodies and obviously their main priority is to go and find Kate Kane and one very interesting thing we had was that Alice was looking at the crime scene far behind as well and she was triggered by what is going on. So you could spot in an instant that Alice had nothing to do with this because she was obviously triggered with the fact that she wasn't able to kill her sister herself. But towards the end of the episode, we do actually find out who has done it. Who was responsible for the crashing of the plane and I'll obviously get to that later on in this breakdown. But we cut to the next morning and who do we find on our screen? Well, it's Bruce Wayne. Not the real one, but Tommy Elliot disguised as Bruce Wayne. And I have to say, Warren Christie has such a great Bruce Wayne look. He's probably like one of the best looking Bruce Waynes we've seen on live action. But obviously, as much as we'd love for it to be the real Bruce Wayne, I doubt we'll see that anytime soon. But the fact that we were able to actually get a body of Bruce Wayne does still open the doors for us to actually see Bruce Wayne on the show. Now we do have Hush Bruce Wayne giving his excuse for returning to Gotham after 4 years as well and his excuse was that he returned to help search for Kate Kane. But obviously he is not Bruce Wayne so obviously he's going to be acting suspicious because he cannot just be Bruce Wayne like that, he's just wearing his face. So we do have these like slight mistakes that slip out of him which eventually lead to like some members of the Batwoman team getting suspicious like for Luke he didn't know how to open up the bad cave for example so he had to get Luke to do that for him these like slight mistakes that slip make them suspicious we then cut to Ryan Wilder in this therapy session just like what we saw in Joker but Ryan is basically telling this woman that she stumbled across something interesting and basically life-changing and this therapy woman is like oh you got a job oh have you paid your bills stuff like that and all of these words obviously are triggering Ryan but we do also get somewhat of a backstory to Ryan and why she's like on the street and like she's forgotten about and we find out that she was like wrongfully accused for 18 months and she was put in jail due to her race and how getting arrested and put away in jail has badly affected her life such as like she's unable to get a job, she cannot rent a house, stuff like that. Now we do have Hush Bruce Wayne along with Luke Fox in the Batcave and we had Hush basically exploring the place and playing around with the gadgets that he sees and just seeing him hold those gadgets just felt really nice. I know it isn't the real Bruce Wayne but seeing him hold those gadgets it just feels so good. But obviously his main goal was to retrieve the kryptonite, that's why Alice gave him the face in the first place and he does succeed, Luke just gives away the kryptonite like that to Bruce because obviously to his logic, Bruce is Batman and he would be more of a secure keeper than Luke 
So he's like, you know what, I'll just give it to Bruce Wayne. But little does he know, the guy standing right in front of him is the man who killed his father, but disguised as Bruce Wayne. We then had this really interesting suit up scene with Ryan and her putting on the bat suit. And every time she puts on like a part of the suit, like when she puts on like the gauntlets and stuff, we get these like flashbacks with her and her mother and what happened to her, like why, why she has like such a tragic backstory. And we find out that the Wonderland gang pretty much beat the living crap out of her and her mother because like the landowner or something of the house he did something bad so the Wonderland gang basically attacked everyone over there so that includes Ryan and her mother as well. So yeah Ryan does have a pretty dark backstory and that is basically what motivates her into becoming a superhero pretty much. Now we do have Ryan testing out the Batsuit and we do see her be like newbie which obviously should happen because she's never worn the suit before. So she does stuff like accidentally enabling night vision for example and then she accidentally hits someone with a Batarang in the false face society. And then we have her messing around with the grapple gun as well. So she is very, very newbie. But she does accidentally activate the GPS as well. So now Luke and Mary are able to track the Batsuit. But yeah, although it was pretty chaotic in regards to how she functioned as Batwoman, like how she used the gadgets and stuff, she did have some very good practice with the goons as well. We do then have Hush Bruce Wayne basically living the life of Bruce Wayne as well. So he's really enjoying being Bruce Wayne. So like he has something like such as being a playboy, pretty much having two women with him in his bed and him also living in Wayne Manor. But we do actually see Alice arrive as well in the Wayne Manor. And she does mention how she's annoyed with the fact that Kate is gone because her plan was ruined. And her plan was something along the lines of framing Jacob Kane into penetrating the Batsuit with the kryptonite and unmasking Batwoman and finding out that it's Kate. And because of the crash, she's obviously unable to do that. She's unable to frame her father for killing her own daughter. We do then cut to Ryan going underground and we have Luke and Mary tracking her obviously due to the GPS. So the two eventually find each other and then Luke and Mary start confronting Ryan about the fact that she's wearing the bat suit. And they're obviously not on board with this stranger just stealing the bat suit and taking up the mantle of a hero like that. But Ryan is obviously the total opposite. She believes that she's full on worthy in wearing the bat suit due to her incredibly dark backstory and how this motivates her into doing some good. We do have Hush stumbling across Julia Pennyworth at the Crow's headquarters as well. And um, this is what gives it away. Bruce Wayne was unable to identify this code name for Alfred. So this is when Julia notices that this person is not Bruce Wayne. It's very much someone else. We then cut to these transitions between the two characters' backstories. So we have Ryan doing research on Kate Kane and we have Mary doing research on Batwoman. And um, I found that scene quite cool and how their backstories are very different. We do cut to Julia telling Mary and Luke about this imposter Bruce Wayne and how he was unable to identify this code name that she gave to him. And then she was pretty much able to point out that this was Tommy Elliot, this is not Bruce Wayne. Now Luke is obviously triggered by that because he obviously gave him the kryptonite. And also, although this isn't Bruce Wayne, we do have Hush in that Batcave and he discovers the Batmobile. But him being on the Batmobile and driving it, how freaking cool is it just seeing a Bruce Wayne, a version of Bruce Wayne, although it's not the real one, but seeing a version of Bruce Wayne in the Batmobile. It's just so cool seeing that. Now, one really, really good scene was when Alice reveals to Jacob Kane that Kate was Batwoman. And I've said this before and I'm saying it again. Alice is by far the best character on the show. Any heated scene that occurs, she nails. And this one is just a perfect example of that as well. And obviously Jacob doesn't believe it. He's like, oh yeah, and I'm the Joker. But Alice starts giving Jacob these like small pieces of the puzzle and he's able to put one on one together and then he does realize that his daughter went missing right after he shot her. So that was a really good acted scene between the two and obviously Jacob's feeling like extremely guilty of that because he obviously didn't know that his daughter was Batwoman and he had like this extreme hatred for Batwoman. So that didn't go very well on Jacob's side but we had this very cool 
car chase scene which was very entertaining to see where we had the rockets from the batmobile just like blasting and all sorts of stuff like that it was so cool seeing that but the batwoman and hush fight scene was pretty cool to see obviously hush was able to penetrate the batsuit because he had the kryptonite loaded up in into the gun but ryan did make a pretty cool takedown but let's just say the kryptonite does affect her later on and I'll get to that in a second. Now we do get the reveal of what happened to Kate Kane through a newspaper where we have Alice flip it around and we have the message from the main villain of the first half of the season that being Sophia and she says consider us even. Now since nobody was able to find the body you could still say that she is alive. Will we see Ruby Rose again being Kate Kane? I highly doubt it so story wise to fit the story that they're going for and to bring in a new version of Batwoman I would say that it would make a lot of sense to kill her off but obviously now Alice is very much pissed with Sophia so I'm very interested to see how that storyline goes. Lastly however we have Ryan opening up the wound that she got shot from the kryptonite bullet that pierced her. And well her body has been infected with this like kryptonite thing like it's spreading across her body so I'm very interested to see what is happening over here. Now overall this is my favorite episode of the show so far or at least one of my favorite episodes. I still think some like Alice centered episodes are a bit better like they are one of the best episodes in the show but I think this one is my favorite if I have to be honest and um, this was a very very powerful kickoff to the show. This episode literally exceeded my expectations and I cannot wait to see what we will have for Batwoman season 2 after this episode. But yeah guys thanks for watching if you guys have enjoyed the video please give a like and subscribe. Tell me in the comment section down below what you guys thought of the episode if you've ob obviously watched it. But yeah I will see you guys in my next video.